Cyrus, in Cyrus, I'm reading about a really cool scientist. Who was Albert Einstein? Hmm, let's find out. By Jess M. Brailer and illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. This is going to be exciting. Who was Albert Einstein? For an idea that does not at first seem insane, there is no hope. Quote by Albert Einstein. Did you know that Albert Einstein was a very poor student who got kicked out of school? Well, he was. Yet he was one of the most brilliant people that the world has ever known. Did you know that Albert was a peace-loving person who hated war? Well, he was. Yet his work led to the creation of the most destructive bomb ever. Did you know that Albert was shy and hated publicity and attention? Yet he was a media superstar. Even now, 50 years after his death, Hollywood still makes movies about him, and t-shirts, coffee mugs, and posters are decorated with pictures of his famous face. Who was Albert Einstein? You are about to find out. Chapter 1. Born to Think. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein made his entrance into the world on March 14, 1879 in Ulm, Germany. He certainly didn't seem like an extraordinary child. He was chubby and pale with thick black hair. He was so quiet and shy that his parents worried that there was not, that there was something wrong with him. They took Albert to doctors. He doesn't talk, his parents explained. The doctors found nothing wrong. The story goes that Albert didn't speak a word until he was three or four years old. Then suddenly, after over supper one night, he said, the soup is too hot. Greatly, greatly relieved, his parents asked why he had never said anything before. Because, little Albert replied, up to now, everything had been fine. Is this story true? There's no proof. Most boys his age played soldier and other rough and tumble games. Not Albert. When Albert saw real soldiers marching with their blank faces, they frightened him. Albert preferred to stay by himself and daydream. He enjoyed playing with blocks and building houses out of playing cards. Some of them were 14 stories high. Excuse me, 14 stories high? His parents continued to worry about their lonely and quiet son. They took him to more doctors. Could, could there be something wrong with his brain? His parents asked once again. Doctors found nothing wrong with the boy. It was just his nature. He was quiet. He was a thinker. Albert's father and uncle had a business that sold batteries, generators, and wire. Electricity fascinated Albert. It was invisible, powerful, and dangerous. Electricity? was like some mysterious secret. Albert pestered his father and uncles with lots of questions. How fast is electricity? Is there a way to see it? What's it made of? If there's electricity, could there be other strange and mysterious forces in the universe? Albert enjoyed thinking about a world beyond the one that could be seen or explained. As he later said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Albert was also fascinated by the compass that his father had given him. 
No matter what he did with the compass, its needle always pointed in the same direction. North, 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 and oh my goodness, you won't believe it, north. Albert turned the compass upside down and sideways. He used it in the dark. No matter what, that needle always pointed in the same direction. Albert wondered why. His dad explained that the earth is like a big magnet that's always pulling on the compass's magnetic needle. Albert was amazed that some strange and powerful force was all around him. He could not see it or feel it, yet it was there, making the compass needle move. Albert had more to think about. School wasn't teaching him about the things that mattered to him. So at age 10, Albert started to teach himself. He was going to read as much about science as he could. The Magnetic Earth. Magnets have invisible forces. Every magnet has two ends, one called the North Pole and one called the South Pole. The North Pole of any magnet is attracted to the South Pole of any other magnet. Bring opposite poles close to each other and they stick together. But try to bring two like poles together, North and North or South and South, you can't. The iron inside the Earth creates magnetic forces. The Earth itself has a North Pole up there with the polar bears and a South Pole down there in Antarctica with the penguins. A compass's needle is magnetic. One end is attracted to the Earth's North Pole and one to the Earth's South Pole. There is an, there is an arrow on the end of the compass needle that always points north. Albert also enjoyed playing the violin. Music calmed his active mind. He especially liked playing duets with his mother. She would accompany him on the piano. One day, while they were playing, Albert suddenly realized that the music chords were like patterns of numbers. Musical rhythms were like counted by threes, fours, or eights. Music's just like numbers, he exclaimed to his mother. Albert was thinking even while relaxing. Later, when Albert was famous and traveled all around the world, he carried only two things with him, his suitcase and his violin. When Albert was a year old, his family moved to the city of Munich. I, I think I'm pronouncing that one right, in Germany. There, his sister, Marja, was born. Albert expected a little sister to be like a toy, but Marja had no wheels like his other toys. Well, where are its wheels? He asked his parents, clearly disappointed with the new baby. The wheelless little girl, however, quickly became Albert's best friend. As they grew older, Albert and Marja loved to take long walks and hikes. Often, their cousins came with them. The higher the hill, the better Albert could think. On these thinking hikes, he used his compass and thought more about how mysterious the world was. He would lie on his back in the grass, look at the sky, and think about space. Is anything farther away than space? How fast would somebody have to go to get there? How does light get all the way from those stars to your eyes? How far does space go on? Could you, could you ride on a beam of light? Is anything bigger than the universe? It was as if Albert had been born to think. His father and uncles helped guide his thinking. His sisters and cousins encouraged his thinking hikes. Albert found books to help him think out math and science problems, and his mother introduced him to music, which engaged his mind in a way that books could not. Just as some kids dream of becoming mechanics or veterinarians, Albert was destined to become a thinker. Chapter 2 
What's to be done with a genius? Albert liked elementary school. The teachers were very kind and patient. They tried their best to answer all of Albert's questions. But things changed when Albert turned 10. That's when he started high school. It was an awful experience. Once when Albert's father asked the school principal what profession his son should consider, the principal said, It doesn't matter. Albert will never make a success of himself at anything. The German high school was very strict. The students had to wear uniforms. They had to march like soldiers from one class to the next. And soldiers made Albert nervous. In the classrooms, everyone had to sit very straight at all times. I wish I should do that. Teachers yelled out orders. Students jumped to attention. Questions were not allowed. Excuse me, questions are not allowed. Is this school full for turning children into machines or to feeding their brains? If you can't ask questions, then you can't learn properly. Albert was expected to read and memorize, but he was not expected to think. <laughs> convinced that it is not a school, but more like a boot camp. Albert was stunned. This wasn't his style. Albert called his teachers sergeants because of how they treated the students. Math was his favorite subject because you couldn't just memorize math problems. You had to think them through. At home, his uncle made up a different difficult algebra problems for Albert. Algebra is math that involves equations. And for Albert, it was like solving a puzzle. I love math too. Albert was also given a book that he used to teach himself geometry. Geometry is a math that involves shapes, squares, cubes, circles, and spheres. I love geometry! And for Albert, it was like playing with blocks. Meanwhile, other boys in his class were still struggling with multiplying and dividing. And Albert was being punished for asking too many questions. Albert never really fit in with the other boys at school. He wasn't interested in sports. And the classes were boring. Albert needed an older brother. Someone who had lived through a rough high school experience to let him know that everything would turn out okay. For Albert, that older brother was Max Tolmy. Max was a medical student and a friend of the family. He often joined the Einsteins for dinner. Max quickly came to understand and appreciate how brilliant the teenage Albert was. He brought Albert lots of books from the local university. Max couldn't really discuss math with Albert. The flight of Albert's mathematical genius, wrote Max, was so high I could no longer follow. But Max did encourage Albert to explore new interests. Soon, Albert was reading about history and studying religion. Albert's family was Jewish, but his parents did not follow many Jewish customs. They had sent Albert to a Roman Catholic elementary school simply because they thought it was the best school available. But for a while, Albert wanted to follow the traditions of the Jewish religion very strictly. For example, he refused to eat pork. Like many people, Albert did not believe the exact words of the Bible, such as passages that said the world had been created in just six days. Did this end Albert's interest in religion? No. It just gave Albert's curious mind even more to think about. Ideas come from God, he claimed. And later in life, Albert often said that his goal as a scientist was to read God's mind. When Albert was 15, his friend Max moved to America. Losing Max was very hard on Albert. 
Then Albert's family moved from Germany to Italy because of his father's business, leaving Albert behind to finish school. Albert was lonely and angry and hated school more than ever. Albert had never looked up to his teachers. Now he grew openly disrespectful of them. Unthinking respect for authority, he explained, is the greatest enemy of the truth. One of his teachers called him a lazy dog. Others said that he was a bad influence on his, on his classmates because he was always thinking questions the teachers could not answer. The end result was that Albert was expelled from school. Good for Albert because now he doesn't suffer that psychological torture anymore. Anger wells up in my body like a bunch of tiny cute rats in a hamster wheel willing to get out from the small glass aquarium from the pet store that they are being held captive in, wishing to go to a larger cage which is the mind's ocean in which we can think and feel and develop our new ideas as rats do in a good sized two by three by eight cage with half an inch bar spacing so that they can frolic around and be happy. That was probably the best metaphor I ever thought of on the bat. <laughs> Hello there everyone, it's me, Scuffins, and you know what I think about that terrible school? That is my opinion. Goodbye.